And we're live. What's up, guys? Listen, Culture and Cannabis Podcast, episode 22. Welcome. My name is JC Coates. I'll be your host today. Listen, we're missing our co-host, full-time Tony. He's 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 sick in bed. He's got the flu. So so send him some positive vibes. But but listen, we're we're, we're gonna we're gonna make up for it. It's gonna be an incredible podcast. Um, we have an incredible episode for you today we're bringing back one of our favorite guests um that he's been here before um you know i like to call him the people's champ right he, he he's he's from master bartender to master grower um he, you know he's doing major major things in the cultivation uh, aspects here in nevada and and it's, it's been one of the, the the first people on the on the forefront of this he's been on the podcast before we're, we're bringing him back with, with with some of his team and some of our buddies evan martyr is in the building what's up evan what's up man thank you again for that awesome intro like you always give me i think i need to hire you as my promo guy <laughs> Thank you. Everything is good, man. Thanks yeah, but, for having me. Yeah, it's it's going to be a great episode. We, you know, we have a, f a few guys here. We we got Gerardo Gonzalez, the man, the myth, <laughs> the <laughs> event <laughs> legend. What, 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 what's up, Gerardo? In the building going? today. Fun, fun. Very stony. Some orange cookies over here from Fleur. Uh, today I brought in my band, my man Tim, though. Another mm -hmm. man that I used to work with knows a lot about terps. Nice. Terpene, terpene Tim. Yep, w Terpene Tim. What's up, mm -hmm. brother? Yeah. What's up? Just hanging out, about to hopefully try some of this orange cookies out and talk terps. Nice, nice, <laughs> nice. Well, we're going to jump into all that. And, and, and listen, it's it's December. You know, it's it's a beautiful time of the year. I mean, for, for, for a lot of us, it's 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 kind of reaping what you sow. If you if you if you live by that that 12 month cycle, you know, we, we kind of work all year and, and and, you know, things tend to kind of slow down and we, we get to we get get a chance to kind of reap some of the benefits of what we put in for the rest of the year. And man, uh, man, um, yeah. I wasn't the only one putting in work this year. I know Evan's been putting in a ton of work. Evan, let's just dive in. Let's give us give us a quick origin story, where, where you came from, where you're at now, and, sure. and, and what's going on. I mean, whole history. So I, I moved to Vegas in uh, 2001 from Wilmington, Delaware. I was a flair bartender, a flair bartender on the Las Vegas Strip for uh, 14 years, from 2001 till about 2015. And I founded a company at that time called Matrix NV. I was the um, founder and chief operating officer of Matrix NV. I ran uh, the day-to-day -day at Matrix NV from April 2016 up until June 2018. Uh, from that point on, I, I moved on and I started consulting. I was actually working out in Arkansas and Oklahoma for a little bit uh, from August of last year until December of last year. And then I was mainly back in Vegas focusing on what I wanted to do here. And I started working with Fleur Cannabis back in April. I was going to start doing sales for them and start doing some uh, extraction work for them. And then that moved into a uh, director of cultivation position. That was, happened in June. And ever since June, that's what I've been doing. I've been running Fleur. And nice. Yeah, it's yeah. it's been awesome. It's been really cool. I mean, it, it looks awesome. I mean, G, G, do they have any good weed over there? At, at <laughs> Fleur, uh, we have that award winning uh, from the Jack Haircut first place sativa, okay. Miss that's Africa. Right. Some good crosses there. You got Miss X, South African, South African KwaZulu, and Fire Alien Kush. Nice. And so that says a lot. But uh, we do orange cookies, which is kind of what we brought here today. Kind of talk about the flower, the strain, terps on it, and uh, just let everybody get a nice little whiff and smell it. Nice, nice. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll I think we're definitely going to smoke some of that. <laughs> I, I, I can't wait for that. And uh, I mean, here's the thing. Like, I mean. You know, for the listeners, I don't know if you guys, you know, have listened to all the episodes and, and Evan was on, on on one of our biggest episodes here in the beginning when we started our podcast, uh, you know, about a year, year and a half ago. And uh, um, I mean, for me, it was really, you, you know, your story is really special to me, Evan, because, you know, I could just relate to it. You know what I mean? And and uh, and I don't think it's just me. You know what I mean? Because you, you, you do seem like kind of like a a normal guy. 
You know what I mean? Yep. It, but you're doing amazing things. And, um, you know, I always considered myself an average guy with above average dreams. Right. You know, <laughs> that's me, too. <laughs> and, 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 I, and, and I can relate with you. And, and, and you know, you, you had a story, um, you know, how you started mm -hmm. on the strip as a bartender. Right. Let, let's just let's just dive into that really quick. Because, I mean, I used sure. to be a bartender. But how do you know, first of all, I mean, you know, if you're in Vegas. Right. Mm -hmm. And you're bartending. You're in the pros, right? And so a lot of, just to frame that up really quick, I mean, you know, you have to take a drug test. You know, a lot of times you have oh, to yeah. join the union. It's no, called- I was a union. Yeah, it's called yeah. skilled labor, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to go to school, even if you were a bartender in another state and you moved to Nevada and you want to jump in as a bartender, they'll make you go to school for a year to qualify as skilled labor so you can join the union mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And and then, so, you know, but, but you can't smoke weed. No. Right. Or at least, um, so there is an initial, an initial, oh man, that's hard to say, an initial <laughs> drug test <laughs> um, early on. So no, to get the job, I couldn't smoke prior to that. And then after that, though, they don't drug test you unless unless you have a workman's comp issue or something like that. So you are running the risk. If you are a smoker and you have a workman's comp issue and you get tested and you're test positive, you lose your job. Right. So, and, yeah. and we're talking about like, if you're doing flare behind the bar, and that's and you exactly trip what I over. If you cut your hand, cutting the fruit or whatever. Um, and there's a workman comp or workman's comp claim. You gotta, um, you gotta go fill out the, the information and they're going to test you. Right. And if you Absolutely. got, if you got THC, if you have alcohol in your system over a certain time, your butt's getting fired. Right. Yep. And so, I mean, you know, so for you, Cut and simple, right? So you just mm -hmm. didn't smoke weed, right? Uh, no, I smoked. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't smoke, but you know, it's funny. I That's actually a funny story. I, I moved out here in 2001 and, you know, spent the whole summer not smoking just so I would pass the drug test coming out here. Then got out here, got the test done and everything, and then started looking for weed and couldn't find anything. And that was after they had medical cards here and that's part of the reason why I got a medical card because I just couldn't find a good dealer. Mm. And <laughs> that was part of the reason why I'd got my card here and started growing again out here. Mm. I didn't plan on growing out here. Before I moved to Nevada, I knew that uh, this was one of the harshest states uh, as far as getting busted for cannabis was concerned, I, you know, you always heard in Nevada, you can go to jail for, for having a seed. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I was always skeptical or scared about coming out here and being a smoker, but then of course they passed it the year before I moved out here. So it was a little bit more lenient by the time I got here and, uh, it's basically July, August, 2001. And so it's not long after I got a card and mm -hmm. started growing again, and as nice. soon as I bought a house out here, that's when. You know the growing started again <laughs> so, so yeah i i continued to smoke the whole time um uh, but to, to add to that though i was pretty much the only stoner the only pothead in the whole group of bartenders that i hung out with and it was a vast group of people no one got high no mm -hmm. one and i was really one of the few so mm -hmm. when I started Matrix and, and I was still bartending at that time and coming up with the idea and all my bartender buddies were kind of like, oh, that's cool, man. But, you know, they didn't really understand it. Now they're all super supportive of it. And it turns out it's funny because everybody was kind of like a closet smoker back then. Now, all of a sudden, like now that I'm out there, a lot of them are like, yeah, man, I love your orange cookies or this <laughs> and that. So it's like, oh, really? You were a smoker the whole time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they just got into it. I don't know. Yeah. But <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I mean, here's the deal. The, the, the stigma is still alive. You yep, know what I mean? Sure. And, uh, and for a lot of people, <clears throat> the, this you know the, the the general stigma, right? The the over looming stigma, like as 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 a view of a country or whatever, it's one thing. But uh, but but more importantly, a lot of times the stigma lives in in, in your family. Mm -hmm. no and it comes from your your mother, or your sister, or your aunt, or your uncle that kind of makes you feel a certain way about you know using the pot. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it, I mean, I can, I can remember when when weed went legal, right? And it was just like. <laughs> You know, um, people didn't used to, to post about it on Facebook, right. right? Now, now you see like you know your aunt, your your, mm -hmm. your uncle po posting about it or whatever. Um, you know, because they, they feel safe about it. Yeah. Now it's legal, right? And and now they're like, oh, it's okay, right? And now it's like you see all these 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 people that you, you know you, you knew that maybe maybe you didn't know or didn't know smoke mm -hmm. weed, but now now you realize more people use cannabis than, than you actually realize. So. Absolutely. Yeah. My father was a big pothead and my mom was not. And they got divorced when I was 17. And that was one of the major reasons why actually. So it, you are correct. It has been a big stigma in just my family alone, you know? And what's funny is, uh, I hid my pot use from my mom my whole life. And I'm sure she knew, but she never saw me stoned or never saw me get high or never saw me with weed or anything like that. And uh, 
she moved out here to work for me at Matrix. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I mean, and that stigma is completely gone. And, you know, you're right. It's been lifted ever since recreational. Well, actually, since medical started, you know, I, I saw it firsthand here. You would see a lot of people trying to get into the industry. Um, some people like in their 70s or 80s, big, you know, mm -hmm. successful businessmen or women that old that had been told their whole lives that pot was bad and that that changed in their minds and they decided to get into the industry and i've i've actually had um a gentleman that was over 80 years old literally crying in front of me telling me about how his you know friends and family had all died from cancer and that he was lied to his whole life and it, it made him disgusted that you know the government lied to him all these years and all of his friends and family could have been helped by cannabis instead of suffering the way they did you know so um, i think that a lot of people are starting to see the benefits or not starting they're really starting to see the benefits of a uh, you know what this can do for you medically and and that really lifts the stigma right off the bat especially for cancer patients if you're a stage four cancer patient going through through chemo and this little thing right here helps you immensely i mean why the f wouldn't you wouldn't you smoke it why, yeah. what's so bad about it especially mm -hmm. you know quality of life end of life situations like that like there's just no reason to deny somebody cannabis yeah so mm -hmm. and I, I think a lot of it um a lot of it just really stems from a, um, an unwinding of the uh you know of, of the things that we were taught right and um you know the war on drugs and all that stuff kind of put things in our mind that you know w we thought was true that wasn't true and and i think a lot of people that actually you know stood behind um you know some of the the stigma and, and i think a lot of those people probably were maybe a little bit un un uneducated right to mm -hmm. give them you know the benefit of the doubt and I, th I think you know now that a lot of the veil is being lifted up and you know we had a, a young lady on the podcast last week that had you know epilepsy you know and um <clears throat> you know she uses epilepsy um you know cannabis cannabis for her for epilepsy has been taken away her seizures mm -hmm. and she's been able to function in life and, and 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 not only that right it's just been because of the cannabis use um she's been able to get off of some of the medications that were given to her um that that is generally um prescribed with people with epilepsy that have horrible withdrawals right Right. And, and, and so, you know, cannabis, yeah, you know, like I like to smoke it because I, th you know, anxiety, you know, a lot of more light, lighter issues. Mm -hmm. I like to do it on a recreational basis, but, um, you know, I, I use it for, for exercising, but, you know, that message just needs to be there. And I know we talk about it all the time, right? but we can't mm -hmm. talk about it enough because of, of, of really the lives that are being changed. But absolutely yeah mm -hmm. what, what, yeah this, man, this, this is good orange this cookies, good orange oh, cookies. Yeah, no, yeah, it's, <laughs> that's a nice stone you got me rambling over here yeah, yeah, like Tim. Oh, yeah. <laughs> i was halfway through <laughs> what, 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 what's going on here g what, what, what do we got up in here you know we, we we had to put in there well actually terpene tim wrote it for me uh so it's actually orange cookies mm -hmm. um, but one of the highest testing uh terps that we wanted to look at and then focus today was limonene and so that's why we brought in Evan and then my boy Terpene Tim, who can more educate on people what terpenes are. And, you know, it's not really about 35% THC with no terpenes in there. Mm -hmm. Maybe 0. 0.0076 is something. But yeah. can I say one thing on that point? Go because, for it. Because, like, I've, I've seen some labs get slapped on the wrist here lately, like right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I don't know what's going on over there. I don't I don't know them personally. But I, but I will say... Uh, um, I believe we're in, in culture and mm -hmm. culture is another uh, term for basically just the way things are done around here. Right. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to, you know, the, the cannabis industry here in Nevada and, and the consumers and everything, and even the buyers, man, can I call it the buyers for a little bit? Because you guys are, you guys are yes. um, <laughs> j j just buying the cannabis based on, um, you know, the, the, no, I'm not saying everybody, but, 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 but the percentage value, right. Mm -hmm. And, and, it, and it comes from a place of where the, the, the consumers want to buy a product as a bigger, um, you know, percentage. And so, you know, we're, we're, we're skimming over the terpenes, right. And, and we're, and so what that creates is it creates, you know, a culture of, oh, my weed has to be, you know, tested high, which in turns, you know, creates this weird thing with the, with the, maybe like, you know, Hey, I'm going to my labs. Can I, can I, pat you on the back and and get a higher testing and you know so i can you know to get it's a toxic culture right that's going on with with the percentages right and we've been talking about it for many months and for you know for years even that mm -hmm. the terpenes are, mm -hmm. are, are what it is but but like now we're seeing that 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 culture right <clears throat> of, of the percentage really having some major 
Right. Shitty backlash about backlashes, you know, and mm -hmm. it is about terpenes. What do we got in here? Because I'm getting high right now. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 You know, I, I, I have a lot to say about that. Actually, I won't get too into it because we don't have too much time. But I, I'll say this. The, um, you know, I've been running uh, cultivation since uh, pretty much medical started. And I never and I've dealt with the majority of labs out there. And I've never had a lab come to me and say, hey, uh, for, you know, whatever, we'll boost your numbers. That's really not how it works is how it works is some labs have a reputation of testing higher than other labs. And then you'll see a bunch of cultivators flock over to that lab. Mm. And I, I've always just stuck with the guys that, you know, there's more to testing than just potency. Uh, there's a lot to it, you know, and, and you want to create good partnerships with lab in the sense that, you know, they can basically, if you start having some sort of issues with mold, for example, they can pinpoint what your issues are and work with you through that. But it's it's more about working with good people with labs as opposed to um, going for results. But you got to understand how the labs work too. It's their machinery is, is, you know, all these numbers are based on calibration of their machines, uh, of their equipment. And if it's just, if it's just a slight tweak, it can be the difference of 5%. And that's, that's huge in, in our world because, you know, 25% to 30%, that's massive. Or 22% to 17%, again, that's huge in our world. Because if you have something that's up below, let's say 18% and all of a sudden the dispensaries don't want it anymore because, you know, it's not going to sell in their stores because of these freaking THC values. And I can promise you, you will get as high off something that is 17% with a good terpene profile mm -hmm. that you will with a 30 percenter that that doesn't have any terps and it's really rare that you even find a 30 percenter with good terpenes mm -hmm. um you know before nevada was testing over in california where they had you know good labs like steep hill and stuff the, the highest testing stuff they saw was 28 percent like that was it yeah, right. you know there was never 30 percenters and when we came on and all of a sudden you're seeing these 32 33 even 35 percenters i'm just like and this is such bullshit because you would take it to another lab and you see the result of 22 percent mm. so mm -hmm. again it's not i i personally don't think it's been like you know uh, the lab saying hey we'll work with you get your higher numbers higher i just think that it was certain labs calibrating their equipment a little bit differently than the other labs that were trying to you know go down the right path mm. but it's it's painful for them though too because they're trying to do business and sure. you know a bunch of these cultivators will go to these labs that are testing with these high numbers just so they can get high dollar for their stuff mm -hmm. it's it's a funny game we're playing but i think that the state is doing a really good job actually of, of coming down hard on them and, and saying hey we need this to be across the board if you go to x lab and you go to y lab you're going to get the same pretty much ratio of thc results and terpene results as the you know as the other two mm -hmm. and they're finally starting to crack down on that and that's what you're seeing now thank god yeah, anyway. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, well, thanks, thanks for shedding that light because, you know, I'm just like, you know, just trying to figure it out too. You mm -hmm. know? I mean, it, it's crazy, but but I mean, I, I feel like, um, you it's know, good weed, huh? that is some good weed. That is some good weed. <laughs> no, well, that's honestly, our orange like, cookies. Uh, go out and buy like it. Like you were talking about, you go to California, you get a lot lower THC testings. Right, it's, right. it's true. You get a lot of these brand names strange your cookies and stuff like that a lot of flavor to them but you go you go into a dispenser you walk out and you look at the thc level it's typically around 18 percent right, right that's I mean, standard yeah exactly and that's great weed yeah and yeah. i really believe that i yeah. it's it's all about the flavor you right know? dude there's it's so funny man i mean you go and buy something that's you know uh with liquor like for example if it's uh what is it 40 proof as mm -hmm. opposed to 30 proof do you get that much more drunk off it? yeah i yeah. mean <laughs> it's That's kind true. of the same thing it's yeah. like you know what's really the difference if you can tell me the difference between five percent on weed or even ten percent <laughs> yeah please no, you know this stuff true. this stuff probably tested at like 18 mm -hmm. and look how stoned we are right now oh you yeah know what i mean and, it's just and it's the flavors it. through the roof yeah exactly like you could you want to just keep hitting it do those terms coming what out? What do we got on that one? The testing was uh, actually THC 19.06. There you go. Ooh, yeah. Of course, see? The lime it needs at 4.3, mm -hmm. linalool at 2.7. That's that linalool, that's what's hitting that's, you. That's yeah. what's nice. And then, you know, that terps, I think, uh, needs to be talked about a lot more. Like mm -hmm. like they were saying, let's like talk about it. 19%, yeah. but I think the highlight of orange cookies is limonene. And so, you know, that's why I brought in Tim. So you could, you could explain a little bit more about limonene. And, you know. no yeah like limonene is an awesome one it's it's pretty uplifting it's a lot of people think that limonene is lemons for the most part mm -hmm. but you don't get that over the strains like there's orange cookies it's probably my favorite uplifting strain to smoke one because i love the linalool like i don't know about you guys but oh. i like a little bit of, yeah, <laughs> of that heavy sedation almost mm -hmm. 
but uh that limonene almost adds a candy-esque flavor it's, it's not like you're eating an orange it's like you're eating an orange candy mm -hmm. uh i mean that's typically one of my favorite flavors you can even that carry carry off and you get a little bit of i mean i see that more in like almost a gassy flavor but this just is like orange sweet orange candy to me sure. and it just mm -hmm. provides a nice kind of full body high you could kind of jabber jaw just start talking <laughs> on that thing it's true <laughs> like I, I love it uh, limonene is probably one of my favorites uh my favorite honestly pair is high limonene and caryophylline a lot of cookie strains mm -hmm. you'll see that mm -hmm. and people don't realize that if you were telling that they think to themselves oh man what is that gonna be just lemons no man there's so much more beyond terps and also i feel terp pairing obviously you grow and you probably see that all the time i'm sure you see certain numbers show up frequently and it's like oh, oh yeah. yeah you can almost predict the flavor on absolutely that. yeah no, that's absolutely cool. mm -hmm. definitely speaking of which what it, what would be your favorite terp beans obviously uh, mercine mm -hmm. is mine oh okay <laughs> that's my yeah. Favorite yeah. Too, yeah i like <laughs> i like the mercine then a little don't get yeah. me wrong but flavor wise i like a good like lime and carry off and cookie yes flavor i'm probably right there with you too mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i mean why do you like the mercine uh, <sighs> sleep yeah. Yeah, rest, yeah, yeah. relaxation yeah. man it hits me right it. here in the eyes exactly. right it's like right in this whole forehead area right? mm -hmm. that's when you know you're high that's right. <clears throat> when it hits you in the eyes you're like oh yes. mm -hmm. just, damn just okay. the relaxation factor of mm -hmm. mercy is what i'm pretty much looking for i'm mainly a night smoker now you know i mean mm -hmm. i never smoke during the day anymore this is really rare for me um <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or like maybe on the weekends watching football or something but run, you know running a business i just can't i can't you know i can't smoke during the day so at nighttime though it's mainly just for relaxation for me more than anything but orange cookies though is a good dinner time smoke as well man. oh that's, yeah that's, <laughs> I definitely that's awesome agree. you know what's funny about um terpenes as well is that so I did a lot of public speaking and a lot of um, bud tender and manager and, and um, patient uh, seminar, patient trainings, patient, you know, just I would go to dispensaries and just talk to everybody. And in medical, that's what we were really focusing on was educating the public and educating the bud tenders. Uh, the bud tenders are by far the most important people to talk to because they're the people talking to the public. Mm -hmm. And we had gotten to a point, and it wasn't just me, it was, you know, all the cultivators in, in this state had gotten to the dispensaries to really start basing their price structures on terpenes not thc um it finally was getting there and people were coming into stores and looking at terpene profiles and not thc so much and then recreational happened mm -hmm. and as soon as recreational happened that literally went out the window mm -hmm. it it became again all the pricing structures of what dispensaries would buy your your cannabis for was based on the thc results mm -hmm. they would also they still look at terpenes don't get me wrong but you know, it's all about the THC, and that's what mm -hmm. they get because the majority of the people doing the most business in this in this town, at least, are are mainly focused on tourism, like Planet mm -hmm. Thirteen, and mm -hmm. the majority of the people coming in there. Uh, well, I shouldn't say the majority, but a lot of people coming in there are saying, you know, what's your cheapest and what's what's your most potent, mm -hmm. yeah. and that's that's THC unfortunate. Though, yeah. But you know, I think that as the industry moves forward and people get more and more educated people will understand that terpenes are really what they should be focusing on mm -hmm. and so it will get there again i think it's and just honestly the face is trying to educate that sativa indica that's more how the plant grows right it's it's how to describe it it's uh it's the road you're on what the thc level and the terpenes decide what path you're going to take right or something like that it was a pretty good analogy of it though and that's the main role i mean i, I wish we could get rid of the whole sativa indica hybrid yeah um it, it's you know, moniker on on cannabis because honestly you know there's a lot of stuff in especially i, I doubt that there's really any true true sativas in our market just because mm -hmm. they take 12 to 16 weeks to flower out yeah. and we don't have the time as cultivators everything for us has to be flowered under nine weeks mm -hmm. so the 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 you know usually the sativas that we're growing a lot of them will have a little tiny bit of mercy in them or you know terpenes that you would mm -hmm. see more so in yeah, indigas yeah. and yeah. stuff like that and nowadays everything is a hybrid anyway there's very few land races yeah. out there mm -hmm. so it's like don't you guys got that Panama red? I got rid of it. Uh, was that was that a pretty <laughs> it long? It like shit. Uh, it, yeah. yeah, we had it and it's just it didn't grow well. Mm, so, and that's the thing. Another thing, a lot of you'll find these some land race strains just don't do well indoors. Yeah, I can believe um, that. Yeah, so we do that Miss Africa though that we were talking about earlier. That is as close to a land race strain as we have at Fleur, and it's mm -hmm. phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And it has you know the true sativa skinny leaves like you would see in Africa. It's really cool. Is it pretty tall? And yeah, yeah, it's it's actually um that plant is is getting to about five and a half feet but it's it got a lot of lateral growth we're cool. actually growing now um 
we're growing indoor trees at Fleur. We're, we're mm -hmm. growing stuff that's literally over seven feet tall. And it's only vegging for six weeks. It's vegging for wow. three weeks. It's three weeks under fluorescent, and then we move into a flower room, and that under HPS, we go another three weeks, and then we flip them. And we're literally seeing plants that are probably about seven and a half feet tall right now. Like our glue on fire might be eight feet tall. Oh, it's yeah, insane. That, yeah, that's it's, one of my it's favorite really cool. Yeah. 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 It's, it's cool. Yeah. Guys, where, guys where, what are you guys growing over there besides that? Uh, so, um, we have 13 strains. I can name them all off real quick, but I think more That's importantly, because we're, we're running a little low on time, but um, more importantly, what we're going to be doing at Fleur is um, I'm trying to establish, you know, the go-to genetics like Super Sour Diesel, like your OG Kushes, which we didn't really have when I got there. Um, we did have, we do have great strains like Orange Cookies, Tangy. We have a new Face on Fire that's phenomenal. The Miss Africa is really good. Great Monster is one of my favorites. We grow another one. Talking about turps, man. We grow another one called Plum Crazy, and I'll end up oh, with yeah, with lower good. results on that, mm -hmm. like anywhere from 14 to 18. Sometimes it's tested like in the 20s, but for the most part, it's it's you know in the teens. But man, the turp profile on that strain is just phenomenal, and so and good. the smell on it is just <laughs> yeah. incredible. Yeah. So that one we're growing a lot. But what what I was getting at is um. We're, we're bringing in a lot of the staples like super sour diesel, but we're also going to constantly be hunting new hot shit at, mm. at Fleur. And that's that's one of the biggest focuses that we have there because we have a, an advantage in the sense that we have a tester room. We have a pheno hunting room and mm. there's not a whole mm. lot of cultivation yeah. facilities that I know of that have that. And so we're just constantly hunting new genetics and that's what we're doing right now. So once, you know, that process takes a while to get started, but once it's started, there's always gonna be something behind those. So mm -hmm. it's gonna be a constant, constant river of new strains mm -hmm. coming down the line and, and with Fleur. So nice. yeah, we're getting there. It's just, so, know, it so the takes, the takes pheno, the pheno room, the pheno hunt room, mm -hmm. right? talk to me about that. So like, how does that work? How do you, how do you go hunting? So basically uh, you start off from seed. So you're gonna hunt from seed and that's that's a bitch because half of what you're, you're starting Starting off is going to be male, and we only want to get female plants. So right off the bat, you cull about 50%. You get rid of about 50% of the plants that you start, and then you have to flower them out, right? So that takes. So you have to grow them up, get them big enough to sex them, and then you flip them into a flower cycle. That's going to take you at least nine weeks, right? Mm. Then, <laughs> in the meantime, though, we have to clone all of those because we have to have a backup of mm. it if it's something that we decide to keep. So we have to keep those clones growing, and that's a pain in the ass because they grow, and it's nine weeks before we even have something that's flowered, and then it's another two weeks before it dries, and another at least two weeks before it cures, and then we go to a lab, and we get it all tested, and then we say, okay, we got good results on that. That's something we want to keep. Wow. Right. And then we yeah. have then we have the clone behind it. Then we're gonna turn that clone into a mom, which takes months and months. Mm. And then we gotta take cuttings off of that and create plants off of the mom. Mm. And so like I said, it's a long process, but that's why it takes a long time to get there. But we're gonna constantly be hunting behind that first round. So mm. you know, once the first round's out, you're gonna have a second round come up behind it, so it's gonna be constant so it won't seem that long anymore. But it was still sexy though, right? Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. Dude, it's my favorite thing in the world to do. Oh, seriously, I love hunting for new genetics. And we have at Fleur, uh, we have some great, great, great guys there that are just great pheno hunters. Uh, and so we're, we're finding some really good stuff. One I thing I wanted to ask you was that La La Land we mm -hmm. see on Instagram. Mm -hmm. What's that cross? Oh, shoot. I got uh, well, You're right, me on the spot, and honestly, I'm stoned now. And I, so, I, I know that one. Yeah, oh, yeah. LA Confidential by uh, LA Affy. Right? Okay, yeah. there you Affy, go. Yeah. <laughs> no, I remember asking that one, too, because I was a big fan of the uh, LA Con. <laughs> and then, yeah, that LA oh, Affy yeah. is just a heavy indica. That's, That's another I'm really one. excited about yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. We have three phenos of that that we really like, and we're growing a lot of it right now. It so. looks really yeah. good. Yeah, it's going to be really good. That's a really great indica. Mm -hmm. Messed up, messed up. Listen, man. Uh, you know, I appreciate you guys who, for for coming over. Mm -hmm. You know, Terpene Tim, uh, Gerardo, Evan. You have a beautiful story, man. Uh, you know, uh, you know, bartender on the strip, founder of Matrix, right? You navigated through all that. Now, now you're director of cultivation at, at Fleur yeah, yeah. Cannabis. Um, it's a dream come true. Man, yeah. it, it is. If let, let's let, let's plug you. Where you at there? Um, Ev, uh, on Instagram. Where mm -hmm. you at? Check me out on uh, so it's on Instagram at Evan E V A N dot Matrix M A T R I X dot M M J. So Evan dot Matrix dot M M J. Nice. Now, and you always have the, the dopest pictures of like you, you chilling in the in the grow room, right? Doing doing the selfies mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And uh, yep. so and then so floors sold. Where, where's it sold, G? Is it sold everywhere? Or? It's sold. Let's see. I always tell people go to Inyo. Great specials there. Acres. Um, 
I still call it blackjack, but a lot of people know it's, it as cure leaf by now. But yeah, it used to be cure blackjack. Leaf yeah. 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 So I always gotta say AKA cure leaf. And we, people we're like, in Planet oh, okay, Thirteen. Planet too. Thirteen. Yeah. We're in Showgrow. We'll be in the Grove. We're in the Grove. Um, yeah, you can find us in more than a handful of spots. We're in a gaggle of places. I'm working on getting in everywhere. You know, that's nice. that's the key. We want to be in all the stores. We have a big grow. We are. Uh, the one thing we didn't mention is Fleur is completely organic. We're using all no-till living soil, and we're using a, a, um, a farming method called Korean natural farming, where basically we're making all of our own nutrients and our own compost. So, pretty much everything that's going into the plant um, was fermented out of the plant, or fermented from fruit, or you know, lactic acid bacteria that we make from milk and rice. I mean, we're doing a whole lot of cool shit there, and. So it, it's a very different grow than anywhere else. And we're also the largest organic grow in the state by far. We're probably three times larger than the other guys that are, you know, an organic grow. So yeah, the we organic cover a lot grow. of shelf space. Yeah, the, orga <laughs> the organic grow is beautiful. Yeah, it really is. But listen, appreciate you guys being here. Thanks, thanks for coming out. Listen, catch us next week, Culture and Cannabis Podcast. We'll catch you soon. Peace. Peace.